soldering. What's best for the railway modeler? About six months ago, I made a couple of videos regarding soldering. And about three months ago, I tried a different solder. I've now switched to a 60-40 uh, tin lead mix. So my uh, use of these kind of um, solders and fluxes have somewhat diminished. <clears throat> um, this stuff here just seems to flow so much better. And when I use it on track or circuit boards, it does the job much better than these previous items. In those uh, videos, I must confess, I did get a bit of a slating from um, pasting solder, solder onto wires and so on and so forth. And some of those comments were fair. So now I've switched to using this stuff. And what's it like? Well, what I thought I'd do now is I'll go through a little bit of a soldering exercise to show you how much better I think it is. And to that end, I've bought myself a new soldering iron. Being the extrovert that I am, I splashed out an amazing £20 on this iron. And to that end, I'll leave a link in the description below. And it's made by Draper. I bought it on Amazon or whatever. Anyway, the links in, the link will be in the Seymour tab below. There's a couple of things I like about this. Not that I've used it because I'm going to use it in anger the first time in vi on this video. There's a couple of things I like about it. Um, it has a variable temperature output and referring to my notes, I'm putting on my readers. The power output goes from 5 watts to 40 watts and um, that equates to a temperature of 150 degrees centigrade out to 420 or for those across the pond 300 degrees Fahrenheit to 790 degrees Fahrenheit. Now 6040 tin, 6040 solder, um, that's 60% tin, 40% lead requires a melting temperature of, got to find this now, 650 degrees Fahrenheit to melt so this will cope more than adequately. If you tend to use this, the ordinary solder, the lead-free solder, then that, that needs a 750 degrees Fahrenheit temperature um, to, to work properly to melt, and therefore you will be putting more heat onto your components, which isn't necessarily a good thing. You could be melting sleepers, or if you use them on sound chips, you could actually um, do more harm than good. So I thought I would give this one a go. Straight out of the box, there's a couple of bits I do like, and that is this lead is nice and long, so I can put the workstation away, so if I'm working underneath the board, I'm not hampered by the closeness of the solder station. And also, the mains lead is long enough to reach the floor to an extension lead if I'm using it on a table. So that kind of seems good as well. So as simple as that, an on-off switch, a temperature output, and I, I would work it kind of at, at three, a two-thirds to three-quarters output should give me the right temperature for using um, this 60-40 uh, mix of solder. Now, it's not illegal to buy this stuff and clearly having lead in, in solder it can be a hazard and whenever you use it you should wash your hands afterwards. And naturally when you're soldering you shouldn't be breathing in any fumes whether you're using lead free or lead. As a matter of interest the lead free solder I think is 19 and a half, 99.5% tin, whereas, oh, and 0.5% 5, and copper, whereas obviously this is 6040. I bought this from Squires, and hopefully you'll know Squires as a model railway supplier uh, from 14.99. It's not sold in length, it's sold in weight, and this happens to be 250 grams. And I've put my uh, uh, meter on it, and it's 1.1 millimeters thick, and it has a um, a flux core, a resin core solder, so you shouldn't need flux. All sounds good. When you solder with it, you also don't really need to sort of rinse the residue, the flux residue off with alcohol, unless you're working on a printed circuit board. If you're working on tracks and points and this kind of stuff, then you don't get that acidic um, effect from um, more, let's say, aggressive 
uh, fluxes like this one where you'll need to wash it off because otherwise it turns green and starts to corrode. So this stuff is all good to go. There we are. Right. The other thing about this soldering iron, the solder tip is changeable. It comes with, um, this is a, a more of a pointy tip and you can get sort of spade tips um, and uh, various other tips that, that are available through, through lots of companies. So what I'll do now is I'll flash this up, do a little bit of soldering and see how we get on. So here we are set up all ready to go. Here's a soldering iron. Um, I'll turn around and face you hopefully so you can see and I've set it to um, kind of uh, the two o'clock position, if that makes sense. So it's probably about two thirds on the way up. And here I have two helping hands. If you haven't got any of these, I'll leave a link in the description. They are so, so useful, especially for soldering because they can hold the object in place. So let's turn it on and see what we get. Right, I've wetted the sponge and time to turn on the soldering iron. And hopefully you can see that it's glowing red. And whilst that's warming up, I'll just show you these other tips in close up um, that are available for this type of soldering iron. Now let's hopefully see if this will zoom right in. And hopefully keep these in, in the right place. So this is a just more of a, of a kind of a flat head type um, soldering iron as you can see it's just flat on one face whereas this one I've taken uh, my old siren, a soldering iron and it's like a spade it's got two flat edges uh, one either side and the one that's in the soldering iron at the moment is more of a kind of pointy one. Now this is warming up and hopefully now I can tin it and if you're completely new to soldering irons there or soldering as it were then what you need to be aware of is um, when you first use the soldering iron, you have to put some solder on it to tin it. And you do that just by gently... Nope, it's, not, uh, it's still not up to temperature, so the, the, the solder will melt onto the iron once it becomes at the right temperature. And now you can see that your, the soldering tip is starting to melt the solder, so you know it's up to temperature. Now behind me there is a fan, so hopefully when the, when the fumes come off, I don't like the, the, obviously this fan to blow the fumes away from me. Now, here are two helping hands that hold the, uh, the item I wish to solder. And the first I'm actually going to do is I'm going to desolder these two contacts. So that should be quite straightforward, hopefully, just a case of putting some heat to it. It should melt the solder on the wire and they should come off straight away. And that's that relatively simple. And then with the sponge, you just give the soldering tip a wipe before you stow it back in its holder. Now to solder cables back onto that point motor, all I'm going to do is use some white cable, a pair of wire strippers, strip the sheathing off, and then give them a twist. Now I mentioned about using this helping hand, so what I can do is get the helping hand to hold the, uh, the item, your piece of work as it were, and then with the soldering iron and the solder, all I then do is heat up the, uh, the, the wire and with the solder I tin it. Along goes the solder and hopefully you can see the effect of having that fan behind me blowing the fumes all away in that direction. So that's this item tinned. Then we come on to tinning the workpiece. Now in this case it's an old Pico uh, point motor so what I want to do is get some solder onto this contact. So in we go with the soldering iron again and a bit of solder and then there we go. Now with solder both on the cable and on that contact on the uh, point motor, all we really need to do is apply heat and we should be able to solder them together. The solder melts, you keep it very, very still, take away the heat and, and there we have it, it's on there. 
good to go. Another basic soldering operation might be to pop a dropper wire on a fish plate. It will certainly save you money buying Pico's own pre, uh, pre-wired fish plates. So I can move that into the right place. So here we are with um, our, our cable. So I'll put that once more in the helping hand. And then with the soldering iron, apply the heat and then in goes the solder onto the wire. You can see the, sol the, the flux burning off. So that's that one. Next thing we need to do is tin the back of the fish plate. Now these are brand new fish plates. If you were an old fish plate and had paint on or whatever, then clearly um, you would need to, uh, to clean it off. So you apply the soldering iron to the, to the fish plate. In goes the solder. And there is our nice shiny blob. Then all we need, of course, is to take out the, um, the cable. And all, all I need to do, whoops, all I need to do is present the cable on top of the fish plate, apply the heat, the solder will melt, take away the heat, and there we are, good to go. Soldering droppers onto fish plates, though, is not something I necessarily recommend because if you've soldered those fish plates into points or track and then you want to lift out that piece of track or that point or whatever, you can no longer slide those fish plates along to allow you can, to easily remove it. So what I always tend to do is I solder my droppers onto the, point, the underside of the point itself or onto the underside of the track. First we need to figure out where we want uh, to make the cut and hopefully you can do it where the webbing on the rail is. And all I do is cut through those sections there and pull the rail apart a little and reveal the steel. With a little bit of emery I then just make sure that uh, that it's clean and will obviously accept the solder. There's no paint on it, no residue, no corrosion or whatever. So I give that a little rub. And it should be good. Next thing is the tinning. So the first thing we need to do is to tin those cables as usual. So with my soldering iron this time nice and hot, or up to temperature, I should say. So we go on to the black one. On goes the solder for the first one. And there goes the red. And because we're not turning this um, soldering iron up to full power, you don't get the burning on the on the insulation as much as you would again when using lead free solder so that works right next thing is obviously to um, is to tin the rails so move that shadow out of the way so apply the heat from the soldering iron give it a chance to heat the rail in goes the solder take the soldering iron away same again on the other side Lovely. And see how much more shiny it is than lead-free solder because lead-free solder, if it's not quite at a temperature, does give a, a matte, a kind of a, a dull shine to it. So now we need to put our cables on, our droppers. And uh, if you've watched my other videos, and I hope you have, I always just drill the one hole through the baseboard for the two cables to go down. So therefore, we want to put the cables going this way and that way, as it were, so that they then feed into the baseboard. So making sure that you've got the cables the right way around, because you may have cut this already to length, you then need to um, solder these droppers on. 
So that will go on like that. And then in comes the, I'm just going to put a drop more, I'll just make sure that soldering iron is, yep, is tinned. Right, so, so there's solder on the rail, solder on the wire, so in goes the heat. Let's wipe that tip off. So I've got a blob of solder on the tip. And then in it comes, in comes the heat. Take away the heat. Give it a chance to cool. Give it a tug. And we're good. And then repeat the same for the other side. Make sure that you've got good view from there. And once more, so in goes the heat. That's great. Okay, let's see if I can run it a little bit closer for you to see. And there we are, they're both on, both good to go. And so now you would you make sure you drill the hole in the baseboard for these two cables to run down and obviously then you would just slide these uh, slide the sleepers back together and from the outside then you've got a little bit of um, uh, wire showing through there but that's nothing that can't be um, obviously hidden with a bit of ballast Oops, sorry hidden there with a bit of ballast so there we go of course there's one very serious point about soldering and that is health and safety Soldering irons get very, very hot. It's very easy to burn yourselves. I've done it, and I'm sure if you've given soldering a go, most of you have too. The fumes given off by the solder with the flux, whether it be the lead-based or the tin-based solder, they're toxic. Make sure you don't uh, inhale them, get a fan to dry them away, do it in the open air, wear a breathing apparatus or something like that. When handling 6040 solder, because it contains lead, you get it on your fingers. You need to wash your fingers afterwards. I don't know how we coped when we had um, lead pipes for fresh water, but that's the way it kind of is. Anyway, that wraps up this video. Um, what I would like you to suggest you do is please don't forget to subscribe. And my previous video on soldering is here, and there should be another one here. And until the next time, thank you. <laughs> I couldn't get that right, could I? Thanks a lot. Take care. Bye-bye.